You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales at Clarence House. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister extended His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's warm wishes to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, noting that the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom's close ties and strategic relationships are extended over the two countries. His Royal Highness welcomed the continual support of the UK Bahrain relations by His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales, adding that both countries continue to expand cooperation in many fields. The Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the UK Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Foreign Secretary and First Secretary of State of the United Kingdom and of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Dominic Crabb. During the meeting, His Royal Highness highlighted the shared history of cooperation and friendship between Bahrain and the UK, adding that these ties are an essential component of regional security and prosperity. His Royal Highness underscored the Kingdom's desire to see these bonds strengthen, noting the UK's role as a source of peace, prosperity and stability in the Arabian Gulf. His Royal Highness and the UK Foreign Secretary went on to discuss a number of global issues and regional developments of mutual concern. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Kingdom, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, hailed the, strong, the string of achievements accomplished by Bahrain Victorious. His Highness stated that the team has become a milestone in foreign sports participation which promotes Bahrain in international arenas as planned. He made the comments following the achievements of Bahrain Victorious cyclist Jan Trantik, who clinched the National Championship Slovenia time trial building on the team's recent string of successes. He said that Jan Strunk's achievements in the tour of Slovenia is a catalyst for his teammates to continue accomplishing honorable results for the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Honor Sheikh Nasser wished success to the victorious Bahrain cycling team in upcoming participations. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, met with the UK Ministry of Commerce, Liz Truss, with the Bahrain Ambassador to the UK, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, in attendance. The Minister affirmed the economic and commercial cooperation between the two kingdoms is witnessing growth on all levels, which reflects their common history and creates further opportunities for progress and prosperity. He praised the bilateral ties on all levels and discussed various topics of mutual interest. The Kingdom of Bahrain joined the world states in participating in a video conference debate under the theme of Agility and Innovation Lessons for the Future from the COVID-19 pandemic held at the UN headquarters in New York. The permanent representative of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Nations in New York, Ambassador Jamal Faris Arwai, gave a written statement in which he stressed the importance of developing the Security Council's working methods. He added that this is required because the Security Council is the main organ concerned with the maintenance of international peace and security, and thus its role should be con concrete under all circumstances and at all times. Arwaya expressed the Kingdom of Bahrain's aspirations to continue holding sessions on developing the Council's working methods on a regular basis as it is of interest to all member states that aspire for the Council to work in the best possible way and for its working methods to keep pace with the continuous changes. He added that these sessions allow for reviewing the progress made in this regard, learning about the aspects of development and listening to many different visions and opinions about ways to deal with them. During its 45th meeting, the ICT Governance Committee discussed the open data policy which aims to enhance the principle of transparency and accountability and highlights a commitment to making government data available and facilitating its use by various sectors to encourage innovation and creativity. This policy has been prepared based on the standards and best practices related to the United Nations e-government readiness index and within the framework of the relevant laws of the Kingdom of Bahrain in this regard, such as the law on the protection of state information and documents and the law of the protection of personal data. The committee also discussed a number of strategic projects and purchase requests submitted by government agencies whose estimated costs amounted to about 3.5 million Bahraini dinars, as well as discussing a set of projects and purchase requests related to improving network systems and infrastructure and updating support and maintenance licenses in a number of government agencies. Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority CEO Dr. Nasr Al-Qaidi praised the government's comprehensive and continuous review for all economic sectors in general and the sectors most affected in particular, including the tourism sector, since the beginning of the corona pandemic. He also hailed the main and pivotal role played by the government in mitigating the economic consequences for the private sector's tourist facilities in light of the exceptional circumstances that the whole world is going through. Qaidi stressed that the government's support will contribute to preserving opportunities for economic stability, financial sustainability and the rapid recovery of the tourism sector and the tourism facilities operating to meet these challenges and exceptional circumstances. 
The infectious disease consultant and microbiologist at the BDF Hospital and member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al Gahtani, stressed the importance of vaccinations at this important stage of dealing with the virus in order to protect against its complications and new mutations. He noted that the mutated Delta virus poses an increasing danger to all age groups, especially children, and vaccination is a way to protect against it through what vaccination does by increasing the number of antibodies in the body and strengthening the immune system of this age group and providing providing them with the necessary protection from the virus. al Gahtani explained that the noticeable increase in the number of existing cases in the previous period, including existing cases of children who did not take the vaccination, calling on parents of, those, of the citizens and residents to take the initiative and register their children between the ages of 12 and 17 years to take the vaccine, as this age group represents a large segment of society. al Gahtani pointed out that any circulating talk about the dangers of the vaccines does not have accurate scientific research base, as the risk of taking vaccines vaccinations for this age group has not been proven. And the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and the Center for Disease Control and Epidemiology recommended the need to take the vaccine for this category to reduce the incidence of complications or fatalities. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,037,162 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 880,146 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccine. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 9,644 with 1,460 recoveries, 547 registered new cases and 12 deaths. 293 of the new registered cases were expatriates, 252 were contacts of active cases and two were travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.